as part of Revolution 250's Go Out and Find History Challenge. This may look like an ordinary beach, actually a very nice beach, but this is the site of one of the revolution, actually the largest American naval capture of the American Revolution. In November of 1778, the HMS Somerset, a British man of war, ran aground in a gale in Nova off of the coast here. This is actually one of the most treacherous stretches of waterways in the country on Cape Cod, pivotal place outside of Boston, which, and the Somerset, British man of war, made famous later when Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's poem, Paul Revere's Ride, as Paul Revere was rowing across the bay, rowing across the bay, where swinging wide at her mooring lay the Somerset, a British man of war, a phantom ship with each mast and spar across the moon like a prison bar and a huge black hulk that was magnified by her own reflection in the tide. That, of course, was 1775. 1778, the Americans now hold Boston, but the British, with the largest navy in the world, is patrolling this coast. And in November, the Somerset, in a gale, ran aground on a bar here and was wrecked. Some 480 men survived the wreck of the Somerset and made it to shore, where they were taken prisoner by the men of Truro and Provincetown. Although I have to say they weren't that much interested in the men. What they were interested in was the stuff they could get off of this ship. And so Provincetown took a third, Truro took two thirds. They divided everything up before the Barnstable militia could arrive militia under the command of Joseph Otis, the younger brother of Percy Otis Warren and James Otis, and he arrived here and discovered everything had been taken. There's a thieving crew out that way, he said, as they were plundering the ship. He talked about the riotous doings at the wreck of the Somerset. One of the Cape Codders who took advantage of the wreck was Sleepy John Sears, and he, in 1776, had started making salt out of the salt water here. The British had cut off American supplies of salt, and so Sleepy John had built troughs on the beach and poured salt water in, let the sun dry it out, and he started manufacturing salt. People make fun of him until the end of the year when he was selling them salt. And then he realized having pumps would be much more effective than picking up these buckets of salt water and dumping them into the trough, so he bought the pumps from the Somerset. There's also a local legend that the doctor from the Somerset stayed in Truro. They needed a town doctor, so he stayed, married a local woman, and raised a family here. Descendants may very well still be in Truro. Now, the wreck was mainly forgotten once we had stripped everything we wanted from it, and Joseph Otis was able to march the prisoners up to Boston, 480 of them, and then the sand and the sea covered it for over a hundred years. In 1886, I think it was, the wreck of the Somerset was suddenly revealed. Another storm washed the sand away, and there it was. And the people in Provincetown and Truro did what they did best. They came out to grab things. And in fact, we can find lots of wonderful items like this. See someone hollowed out a book, and inside is a piece of wood. A piece of wood from the Somerset. It says, Lost on Cape Cod, 1778. So marvelous souvenirs from the Somerset before the looting stopped and the ship then was placed back under the sand. Nature covered her up again. Remember, as Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, no, I'm sorry, as Henry David Thoreau said, fortunate they all have three names. Henry David Thoreau said, here are all man's works are wrecks. About 15 years ago, the beams again surfaced and you could go and see them. There really wasn't much to see and unfortunately, um, not much to take away, but there the Somerset remains, here on the outer beach of Cape Cod, a place where you would least expect to encounter the American Revolution. Thank you for joining us.